All right, and I see people coming in. Hello, everyone. We'll give it a few more minutes while people get settled and come into the room. Hello, welcome. We're so glad that you're able to join us tonight for In Conversation with Catherine Blackburn with Tenille Campbell. Um, I'm really looking forward to this talk. I have my tea ready to go. Um, so this should be a really great conversation. Before I pass it over to both Catherine and Tenille, I'll go over a brief uh, introduction uh, while people come into the room and then we'll jump right into the conversation. Um, hello everyone, before we get started, I figured I should introduce myself. My name is Sophie Hinch. I'm the Education and Public Programs Coordinator at the Art Gallery of Windsor. And we're so glad that you're able to join us tonight. Um, here are just a few things to remember during the webinar. You can use the Q&A box uh, to submit any questions that you may have. Sometimes in the chat, it's easy to lose questions. So the best place to drop your questions for the artists is directly in the Q&A box. But feel free to interact in the chat. Tell us where you're from, where are you tuning in from? We love to see who's in the room with us tonight. Uh, you can also familiarize yourself with the AGW Code of Conduct. We use this Code of Conduct for all of our digital and in-person programs. I'll drop it in the chat uh, once we get going. It's a link, you can go through it, save it as a resource, uh, but we ask that everyone just familiarize themselves with our Code of Conduct. And lastly, our automatic closed captions are enabled for accessibility tonight, uh, so please use those uh, if you'd like. We'd also like to give a special shout out and a big thank you uh, to Canada Steamship Lines uh, for sponsoring this program and Catherine's exhibition here in Windsor. So New Age Warriors is curated by Jesse Campbell and organized in partnership with the Dunlop Art Gallery, the Indigenous Peoples Artist Collective, Moose Jaw Museum and Art Gallery, the Art Gallery of Swift Current and the Chapel Art Gallery. And this project has been supported by the Canada Council for the Arts, the Saskatchewan Art Board, Saskatchewan Art Board's Culture On The Go program and SAS Culture in Saskatchewan lot Lotteries. And this project has been made possible in part by the government of Canada. So thank you again to Canada Steamship Lines. With every program, we like to begin and take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we gather today. Uh, so while this program and reporting is happening digitally today, I want to acknowledge that not only myself, but the Art Gallery of Windsor is physically situated on Anishinaabe territory, the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi as well as territory upon which the Haudenosaunee have historically been established. Today, the Anishinaabe of the Three Fires Confederacy are represented by Walpole Island First Nation, and we want to state our respect of the historical and ongoing authority of Walpole Island First Nation over their territory. I'd like to take a moment to introduce both of the artists present here with us tonight. Catherine Blackburn was born in Patuanak. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, pardon my pronunciation, um, Saskatchewan, and is of Dene and European ancestry. And she is a member of English River First Nations. She is a multidisciplinary artist and jeweler whose common themes address Canada's colonial past that are often prompted by personal narratives. Her work merges mixed media and fashion to create dialogue between historical art forms and new interpretations of them. Through utilizing beadwork and other historical adornment techniques in her practice, she explores indigenous sovereignty, decolonization, and representation. Her work has, exhibited, has been exhibited in noble national and international exhibitions and fashion runways, including Borderline 2020 Biennale of Contemporary Art, Abba Dacon, National Gallery of Canada, and Santa Fe Haute Couture Fashion Show in New Mexico. 
She has received numerous grants and awards for her work, including the Saskatchewan RBC Emerging Artist Award, the Melissa Levin Emerging Artist Award, publications in Vogue and Insta magazine, and was longlisted for the Soviet Art Awards and most recently selected for the prestigious Oh boy, this is a word I'm not familiar with, <laughs> but you can see it there on the screen, Contemporary Art Fellowship. Um, so thank you, Catherine, for being here with us tonight. And I'll also take a moment to introduce Tamil Campbell. Uh, Tamil K. Campbell is a Denning Meeksi artist from English River First Nation, Saskatchewan. She completed her MFA in creative writing at UBC and is currently working on a doctoral degree in Indigenous literature and at the University of Saskatchewan. Her poetry collections, hashtag Indian Love Poems um, and Nedi Nezu, focuses on Indigenous erotica, using humor, storytelling, and sensuality to reclaim and explore ideas of Indigenous sexuality. She is the artist behind Sweet Moon Photography, specializing in capturing indigenous stories. And she currently resides in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And if you haven't had the chance to visit the Art Gallery of Windsor, um, firstly, what are you waiting for? Come and visit us. <laughs> uh, you're truly missing out, um, but you'll get to see some of Catherine's work uh, so Catherine Blackburn's practice is centered on contemporary interpretations of traditional forms. And in her exhibition, New Age Warriors, she uses the framework of beading to explore cultural identity, memory, and history. And Blackburn used perler beads to create seven life-size warrior garments and language medallions. Each outfit is an amalgamation of elements based on traditional female clothing, from different nations in Canada, which speaks to the diversity of Indigenous women. And although embedded floral and geometric designs are drawn from traditional imagery, the structure of the garments is futuristic to assert that Indigenous women's resiliency is their new age armor. Um, and before we pass it over to both Tamil and Catherine, uh, just a reminder to use the Q&A box to submit your questions and interact in the chat. And I will slowly fade into the background. I'll pass it over to Tanil and to Catherine. I'll be sure to spotlight both of the artists so everyone should be able to see both of you. And um, yes, everyone enjoy. I'll also be on PowerPoint duty. So Tanil and Catherine, if you need me to go to the next uh, PowerPoint uh, or slide, let me know. So welcome to Neil and Catherine. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. <laughs> yes, hello, everybody. Thank you. We're very excited to be here together, but not together, like COVID life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I generally kind of do my own like indigenous introduction. Can I? Do you want to? Oh, like, yes, go for it. Yeah, right? Like, I don't know. Do it. I'm like, Iglanade, <laughs> Tante. Like, we know my name is Tanil K. Campbell, and I am a Dene from English River First Nation and a Red River Metis from Batash on my maternal side. I've been a photographer for the past 12 years. I just did the math. I'm a little stunned. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout the last five years, I've been working with Catherine Blackburn on and off on certain collaborations and projects, and just been always constantly in awe of her vision and how we work together. Thanks, Danielle. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a little introduction myself. I know Sophie introduced us already, but um, as you know, my name is Catherine Blackburn, multidisciplinary artist. I was born in Patchnack, Saskatchewan, and I'm also a member of the English River First Nation. Um, in proximity to where Tenniel, um, I believe you were born and raised in Beauvel. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Tenniel? Okay. We are within like very close proximity, basically a road, um, a really rough road <laughs> <laughs> away from each other in terms of our, our homelands and our communities. Um, I grew up in rural Saskatchewan in a farming community, so I was not raised um, within Patchenac, but I did uh, visit a lot as a kid. My, my mom is from 
Pachinak and my mom's side of the family. And Sophie and I were just discussing previous uh, to this that my, my dad's side of the family resides in Ontario. And um, my grandparents on my paternal side were born in Halifax. So um, yeah, it's a little tidbit. And I, um, I'm a little bit nervous to be in conversation with Neil. <laughs> um, I think mainly because, and it's a good nervous, I'll say that, but we've worked so informally um, with each mm -hmm. other in terms of, of our creative place and, and where we draw, how we draw inspiration from each other. Um, it's always laughing and, and, um, yeah, just being excited in the moment with one another that this, for some reason, like intimidates me to some degree, but I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> and, um, I also am so enthralled with, with Tennille and her most multifacetedness, um, being a writer, being a photographer, being um, a scholar and a student. Um, she is a mother. She's an auntie. She is all these beautiful things um, wrapped up in this amazing package of a woman that is a powerhouse. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I feel honored to um, have worked with you and to keep working with you. And I know we'll probably be on to the next project after we finish discussing, discussing this one. So bring exactly. it on. Exactly. <laughs> now that I know how to bead. <laughs> <laughs> nice work also. <laughs> I'm like, um, uh, I don't, there's so many, so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Where do we want to start? Um, we talk about? Where we started? Where? Do, yeah. Yeah. I would love to know your version of how we started. Oh boy. You know what? I was actually thinking of this, um, as we were doing some prepping for this and I actually don't remember, like recall to like a moment because I feel like we've known of each other for so long through various people um, coming from, like I said, the same area of Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. all of our cousins are intermingled with, you know, with how we know each other that when it came down to like deciphering what was the first thing I honestly I probably met you multiple times previous to us working together but in terms of like a project capacity it would have been you um documenting or photographing me for headshots I believe mm -hmm. that turned into whatever that it rolled into jewelry shoots and then kind of rolled into this more um, producing artwork in terms of an exhibition style format. So it's all like, it's all very blurry in the, in the very beginnings of it for me. But, um, but yeah, I think like it link definitely links back to like in a professional capacity, the headshots. I remember like vaguely doing the headshots. I remember like your style and like your grace and me being like, damn, all right. Oh, I, you were, it was like, you were like, this is going to be awkward. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, where, when, who? But oh, well, that's nice what story. really got me is when you were like, I brought this like giant beadwork on a canvas. Mm -hmm. I want a picture with it. And I mm -hmm. had no idea what to expect. And then you whip out this giant <laughs> canvas of beadwork and I've never seen anything like it and haven't since. And you're like, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was with such an air though, right? Hopefully. No, like it wasn't like <laughs> egotistical or anything like that. It was just like, look what I did. No. And you were still picking at it because you are a perfectionist mm -hmm. and you were like, oh, this bead, this one bead. And I was like, <laughs> and, and I remember like that being a highlight and I remember like the portraits you did of your grandparents mm. and how that just stuck out of my head I remember you made moccasins and you beaded a portrait mm -hmm. and this was like, this was like your first pair of moccasins and you're like <laughs> we're just gonna make it legendary <laughs> and they are and I have them saved like in my Instagram like save folder because they're oh, cool. stunning and just the way that I remember you 
would jump from like project to broad project based on what inspired you mm. and didn't just like stick within these rigid guidelines of this is my art. You're like, this is all my art. <laughs> and I really like that. Oh, that's cool. I, to be fair, I had a lot of help. I, so I was in mentorship with my grandmother, my late grandmother, my Setsune for the, the Maklux. And that was um, one of my first, yeah, beaded garment in terms of garment wear, um, not, not accessories per se, but garment wear. Um, yeah, she helped guide me in that work. And that was back in 2012. And wow. that was kind of at the time where I was just kind of in the beginnings of the jewelry business, deciding what I, what I wanted to do with that. So that's, yeah, a long time ago already. That was, yeah, 2012. And then the scar image you're talking about, um, the beaded bruise, I should say, not the scar, um, <laughs> that piece was made in 2016. And I think we had been working in some capacity with each other previous to that for a little while. So, wow. so yeah, it's been um, quite the ride with our collaboration and, and what we've done and continue to do. And, and that's one of the reasons really that, and I know this is probably one of the questions that people are kind of um, wanting an answer to is like, why, why each other and and what keeps us you know coming back to one another in terms of um finding inspiration in each other and and our work together and i know for me um that is a that is something built on pure trust with you and and your work and what you say through your work and I don't know how many people are aware of your writing as well as your photography, but um, through your work, you create a very, very safe space for people. And that's initially why I gravitate toward you, just generally as a person, but also through your work. And it allows me, um, because I think for a long time I struggled and I, I'm not gonna lie, I continue to struggle with my identity too. Um, I think it's all part of the navigating as an indigenous person and, and also a mixed um, person as well, but you create a safe zone for me to allow you, I, I, I feel I can, I can let go of that space for you to play with. And that's mm. built on trust because uh, there's complete trust that I know the the what you will reflect back to the world is one that signifies strength and power um and love for our people and so that is why i continually am drawn back um to work with you um yeah it's um it's a nice it's a really nice place to be to not have to to question any of it because i think sometimes um and this is like getting heavy already, I know, but as indigenous people, um, there's not there's not always that trust right from uh -huh. right from the gate. And so it's like building that trust. But with you, it's it's not that. It's like we can get to the core of what we want to say because we already know um, based on our relationship and and how we've operated and and how you operate with your within your own within your work but also who you are as a person that I can just say here I trust you with this now let's play together and let's create something really magical and and so half the time we don't even know what it's going to be like it just <laughs> you know it just kind of like happens in those moments and mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of our of our collaboration <sighs> that was so nice to hear thank you <laughs> We're just gonna be like staring at each other with love. <laughs> People are like <laughs> turning off. There. I'm just like oh, <laughs> they're yes. tuning out. Um, <laughs> but it's so it's always really interesting and funny to kind of hear the other side because mm -hmm. every time that you come to me with this idea, I'm terrified because. <laughs> 
because you don't come with an idea you come with a very structured thought Mm. and you know you style it and you bead for it and you prep it and you got the models you got the hair and you do so much grunt work that generally I have to do as a photographer Mm. so like I get it I feel it I love it I respect it but then you're like here and I'm like what am I supposed to do (laughs) (laughs) because in my head you've had you have a final image Mm. and I think it took me a couple sessions at least to kind of understand that you were so open to me experimenting with your vision and that you truly wanted it to become our vision Mm. like what can we do here and once I kind of realized that because like you know now you know like before I would never let anyone direct me I would never (laughs) let anyone tell me what to do they'd be like what about this shot I'm like what about you go stand over there (laughs) (laughs) yeah I did not know that at the time but (laughs) but I was like Catherine Blackburn is an artist (laughs) and I have to listen (laughs) oh that's so interesting it is it's really funny and even like even now like we know we're gonna work together on something Mm -hmm. again this is a given I -hmm. trust you you trust me we make magic and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna be nervous here be like I have this idea like oh creator (laughs) guide my camera (laughs) yeah that's that's a a good feeling yeah that we can lean on each other that way I think is so it's so important and also like I do, I know I come rigid to in certain ways with my work. Cause you're right. Like I have, I have my own process with my art Thank making you. that is very strategic. And I have an idea for a final image that I know I can't create myself. Um, and I know we learned like, and maybe we can get Sophie to show the next um, image in a minute here too, but the image that like we're looking at for example right now with the beaded piece when we when I came to you and asked you to shoot that with me um and on me it was number one terrifying for me because I'm not often the subject of my own work and so there was a a way that I wanted you know my face to be anonymous in it and there was a a certain feel that I wanted that image to portray. Um, And it was interesting because then you took the bruise piece off of me and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna do, can I just do something for me? And I was like, yeah, like go for it. Little did I know it was gonna involve my face being shown and (laughs) you telling me to take my top off. But but look (laughs) at that. (laughs) <laughs> but that is the trust, right? Then that's how it like continually comes back into play. Um, and we don't always have to be, and that's also what I love about our, our relationship is we don't always have to be um, in sync with each other, but we mm-hmm. cater to one another and we're willing to let go of that control that I know I have as an artist. I, I'm sure you do as well mm-hmm. as a photographer to some extent, right? But to be able to let go of that is really hard for me. But in the end, these are the images and the content and, and the beauty, the beauty that you see in people um, celebrating the body is so difficult, I think, for so many people to see, especially Indigenous bodies, to be celebrated uh-huh sexually sensually romantically like all of fiercely it's hard to get to that place and you 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 just have um you just have that skill with people you have that um it's not it's a natural thing and and not everyone has it to be able to to get people to trust in that way and so um, yeah, this is the image that you took for your own portfolio. I wasn't going to use it for my work, but you know, I know it's an image that you wanted. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's pretty neat. I don't know. No, neat. I love this image. <laughs> I, like, I like the other one. I like, I like where you were going. I understand why you want to be anonymous. 
I like the traditional posing. I like the fact that you made me do it in studio and I hate studio work. So oh, like, yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I forgot about that. Constantly <laughs> making me yeah. challenge myself. Love it. Here for it. But I also wanted something that, you know, vulnerable, but strong. Mm. I, I wanted to see your face because too often we don't see our faces or we're erased from history and like I like what you did but I like what I did too <laughs> fair fair yeah and I think they both they both come with a different type of message too Completely. I mean the content is still there it, it's still a bruise it's still an indication of of trauma um mm -hmm. but you the the other side of it is this realm of possibility and this okay. universe some people look at that bruise up close when it's you know the textile piece in front of them and they've i've been told they see the universe or they see a galaxy mm -hmm. um and to me this image that you took is representative of that the the celebration um in in our strength as indigenous people to see to focus more on the beauty and the celebration of our resiliency than you know have trauma and grief override that and so they do it in diff in different ways but they both do it so yeah completely oh, good times good times um yeah Anyway, I'm gonna, you said you were gonna lead, so I'm just gonna let you lead. <laughs> Me? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, thanks, now. No, um, let's talk about our New Age Warriors again, because mm. this, how many sessions did we do? Four? I think it was only, was, I think it was only two. New Age Warriors wasn't it we did no we did the mountains that was a calgary yeah, trip and, Cal and calgary was that like the the nikina weaselhead one captain kanewa yeah. and susanna was that the same day as the morley i don't know if it was the same one? day so the yeah these two images well not these two images but these two sessions it wasn't the same yeah. day okay that was okay, the same so trip, maybe though. it was maybe it was three three or four days then. I'm already blanking. <clears throat> no, 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 like no sessions overall. Like there was oh, seven sessions. There was, <laughs> I think there's seven. Oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we like compacted it into I either two or three days then because I think the Saskatoon shoot, the Saskatoon and area, we crammed in like four sessions or something that day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. we were insane yeah but we and it was it. cold the saskatoon mm -hmm. the first saskatoon cold. one yeah yeah because we did yeah. the other girls in the summer yeah the other women sorry <laughs> no, that's okay um yeah these are so the images that are up right now are I kind of wanted to give the audience an idea of, um, I don't know how many have actually seen the, the show as an exhibit, but these are the models that were in two of the portraits. However, these were alternatives. Um, so when Tennille shot, Tennille shoots fast and she <laughs> gets like an array of images, um, which is wonderful because sometimes again, like I'm so stuck in like, my rigidity of what I think I want. And then she'll twist it up and say like, let's try over here or let's try including, you know, like in the image on the left, let's try including the traffic or like have it be a more urban setting and include more background information. Um, and so we had, by the end of all of these shoots that we're discussing, we had, she gave me such an array of images like, I then had to go through and pick my favorites, which was excruciating because it literally came down to um, a lot of, some of it came down to like the background information and like wanting mm. to tweak so much of it that it just became like, hey, no, that's just getting too insane. Like, let's just choose a different image. 
Um, but it did come down to like very, very minute details, which is just a testament to you as a photographer as well, because you do catch things um, within the moment and fix them before they even need to go into any kind of like Photoshop or editing program. So, um, but these were also like the two we're looking at, these are such strong um, choices as well. But in the end, I know from what I was wanting originally and from what you delivered, um, we, I, I wanted a selection of background images so that one could look at all seven of these in a room and see landscape, could see urban indigenous um, perspective and experience, um, you know, like an array of, of indigenous experience because so often we're, we're seen as one dimensional or we're pan Indianized mm -hmm. and we're, and we're so generalized that um, those stories and those perspectives and these truths and our, our stories get lost um, and our voices and how we're seen. And, and so it was about putting these women, um, you know, in places that they were also comfortable and that, that maybe they see as home also, they didn't have to be super specific um but that yeah that would that, that they're a reflection of them in some way and so um the image on the right that that i chose ended up being um kirsten and erica who you see their sisters holding hands the image i chose was them in the water um they're from morley alberta and um, they're surrounded by lakes and glacier lakes and rivers, and they live in the foothills of the mountains. And, um, and the image that was created from that, that water shoot was one where um, the words that you see spilling down from their regalia that I've made there, it was almost like the straw, they were straws, um, like sucking up the water that they were standing in Aww. and they were such like pillars in that moment of strength and and just how you had um positioned them in that image the final image that that was why i chose i wanted that one and and there was water and we we're talking about like water protectors and um you know different movements happening as well um, uh -huh, uh -huh. during all this. So yeah, there was a lot of information. Um, like I remember when we were doing that shoot, um, the sister is like putting them in the water because this is a mountain fed stream. This was ice damn cold. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember it had started to drizzle. And in some of the photos, still, you can see the raindrops hitting the water. Mm -hmm. And these girls were like getting wet and cold and like their skin was getting covered in goosebumps. And just for like the love and respect of the relationships that they have for you, because all the people that you chose in the series, like had kinship with you. They were related, they carry community and responsibility. And these girls like honor that relationship in such a beautiful way. And I also remember like the laughter, like for all the stoic images that we did, like I remember you like trying to like reverse and like falling and <laughs> me like tripping and holding my camera up and <laughs> me having to like sink into the water a bit and being like grumbling. And you're like, I'll buy you Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was so much joy going on. Mm -hmm. uh, what what other show, images do we have for that series? Um, I'm sorry, they're not in. Oh, they're <gasps> not. so this was uh, another alternative that I really loved. This is um, Katrina Eagle Child, my cousin. Um, I had written just as little side notes here, so I didn't forget. At the time that these women were shot, um, I had. So maybe kind of go pulling back a bit for a minute when you're mm -hmm. you're talking about um, the women I chose, the models I chose, and why. So all of these women are either relatives, um, family, or friends. Um, I see them all as sisters, and I at the time of formulating 
what New Age Warriors was um, for me. It was about celebrating, number one, um, it, it's a project seeped in the labor of love of garment making. And for me, that is very uh, feminine in terms of historically who made who made garments for our communities and our people. It was usually, and not always, women. Um, mm -hmm. That has changed, but I wanted to honor that work and, and honor our women in that way and also um, pay homage to ma matrilineal ways, you know, like pre, in terms of like um, how we understand un understand ourselves and our communities or people, so I should say people understand us and our communities. It's a very like pa patriarchal way of understanding and and prior to that, it wasn't always that way. It, it usually wasn't that way. It was either mm -hmm. matrilineal-led communities or headless societies. And, um, and colonialism changed that. And so it was wanting to celebrate um, and honor women pre-contact and, and what, what that means and how we continue to do this within our communities. And I have a direct... Um, relationship to that just through my grand my late grandmother who was a, a bead worker and and a garment maker and I would watch her as a kid just like always beading always tanning hides always prepping hides and out on the land and gra grandpa and my uncle is bringing back you know a moose or deer or caribou it was usually moose and and grandma being out on the dock waiting you know to bring bring the moose and so she could get right down to work and start prepping the hide to make moccasins and mucklucks and gauntlets and all these beautiful items so that is very much based in this connection to um bead beadwork and adornment as a labor of love and and the hours put into it and how that was often gifted it wasn't it wasn't a business it was, you know, made for our loved ones and the hours of adorning just like tiny beads and like personalizing things and like on top of keeping her children warm and her grandchildren warm was this like insane amount of work that went into mm -hmm. making it beautiful and making the wearer feel protected in that. And so knowing I couldn't possibly bead all of these garments, I was thinking about alternative ways. And that's where perler beads came into play and using plastic beads as the base for these, these garments. And so that's kind of, yeah, where, where it all kind of ties in together in terms of um, what I'm making and why. And then it became about, well, who are my models going to be? And I wanted them to be in relationship to me in some way so I could speak and speak and also like speak to and honor their own um, relationship to communities or the I guess this um, larger idea of community as well and how their either jobs or relationships or it could be anything tied back into community. And so for Katrina, who we're looking at in front of me, um, Katrina, like I said, is, is my cousin. Um, for this series, her title was called Mother of Mobilization. And she's a youth coordinator in Pachinac. Um, and she's also the mother of three. And so her beaded choker says mother in sign language. Um, and that is that is glass beads, um, but the rest of her garment is plastic and plastic beads. And so, yeah, that's kind of how all of those tie in. All of the models used in this were other people I knew, and then their medallions were a way of kind of signifying um, their place within community or like this broader context of community. So maybe it was a mother, maybe it was a teacher, Devin Fiddler it was, she was a businesswoman who started this business from the ground up, who's also a mother. So all these people that I just really admire. Um, and of course I couldn't include everyone cause I only had, you know, enough time mm -hmm. to make a certain amount. So of course this could have extended beyond, but, um, kind of the editing process behind like, you know, the seven or eight women that were um, 
chosen. And yeah, it was, it was hard <laughs> because a lot of them too didn't necessarily want to be in front of the camera. And I can understand yeah. that completely. But again, um, bringing you into this process and this project in that way, people let go of that. And that's what mm -hmm. I mean. Like you, you have um, a, such a gift of, of like, I know Jill George, very quiet, my cousin who was the front runner fighter in our series. Mm -hmm. um, and my sister, Christina Duffy, who doesn't like being in front of the camera. Um, they, in that moment, felt powerful and also because they knew you and had a relationship to you. And so, um, yeah, all these, all these facets of this work somehow came together in the perfect bundle. And I don't know, I don't know exactly how, <laughs> because it was two years of like, an insane amount of organizing and planning but also there's only a certain amount that you can plan right and then the rest yeah. is it's going to be what it's going to be but um yeah the image in front of you is another like option for um Katrina's portrait that I that I absolutely loved but um the one that I chose you had captured the shawl the, the yeah. plastic on the shawl more in movement and I really liked um, the idea of bringing the body and movement back into certain images. And you and I had talked about that too, being a goal is that we're not static people. So mm -hmm. we can't always be seen as that. And what's one way that we can kind of play and like recontextualize that idea. So it's, yeah, more that our presence is known and that it's known in in this time you know and it's a reflection of who our what am i trying to say our um multiple perspectives and experiences too so i know i still have so many feelings when i see this collection especially when i see it in person because i agree with most like your top choices like you, you have a great <laughs> eye <laughs> most well most, yeah I'm like uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> no 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 all of them for what you needed mm -hmm. and um but I remember like going to the opening going to one of the openings and seeing for the first time my photography mm -hmm. in a gallery and being like well damn <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. <laughs> well I know I still still to this day like I have to work on that because it goes to the back to this idea of like what is art and it seems so naive to be like is photography art of course it's art mm -hmm. um but so often we don't see indigenous women in this art we don't see brown-skinned women in this art we don't see dark-skinned women in this art and it's so important so I just remember being like so incredibly honored and also like feeling in this unknown in this transition space in this what now mm. like what where are we going now and i think you really kind of capture that feeling with all these images like yes you show we're not static you show like like stories we travel urban we travel bush we travel fancy we travel res and taking I'll say like Katrina as an example because she laughed so hard she laughed mm -hmm. so hard when she saw herself because she was just like <laughs> she never gets dressed <laughs> yeah. up and we're all like you're a model <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, not only are you pretty because yeah. anyone can be pretty mm -hmm. but you were captivating and powerful mm -hmm. and so confident and it just shines through like look yeah. at her yeah Oh. And, and that's her too. And like, yeah. I used to know Katrina better when we were kids growing up, I would, you know, go to Patchnock more often. And, and then we, we lost, not lost connection, but you know, as we got older and, and I visits, visits weren't as frequent, it became me visiting the North usually on somber occasions like funerals and mm -hmm. rarely for joyous occasions and this project was so pivotal 
for me in in my own navigating of my own identity and my own soul searching and all of these things where it's it's not it's not about displacement anymore you know it's it's more about just reconciling that we're so often fed to believe we are one one dimensional we're so we're so we're seen as that so often or it's one or the other right it's like warrior or provider or this or that mm-hmm. and it's there's so much not discussed and so much not shown and like you said so underrepresented or misrepresented and for me this was my connection back into my community meaning Pachinac and and having cousins like Katrina show up and say I'm here cuz like let's do this thing and it was like that's how easy that that was like I put up such a wall and thinking a, a boundary for myself and thinking like I that's not my place anymore I didn't grow up there I'm not seen as this or that or the other thing and all it took was to reach out to a cousin and say do you want to be part of this or I'm inviting you into this and I would like and and it was of course it was yeah let's like let's do this thing and so it was a powerful um this this body of work was so powerful in that way and it was such a surprise um in so many ways and one of I wanted to kind of share this too because it was just such a a beautiful moment to have happen I wasn't there at the time but um when this work debuted in Prince Albert at the Man Gallery, um, and all of you came out, it was so beautiful. Like a lot of the models came out and a lot of my family and relatives who I hadn't seen in quite a while were like waiting in the parking lot, waiting to get into the opening. And it was just such a beautiful gathering and celebration. And, um, the so the work was in yeah man gallery for I think it was two months or three months and they were bringing I didn't know this at the time but um I knew they were bringing youth into the gallery for some workshops and some tours and and I thought it was mainly high school students but um I was told later on that this young group of little um like I can't remember how their age now anywhere from like five to like ten in there um their their mothers were in the detox program in in Prince Albert and their teacher at the time brought them in to visit the gallery and take them out for this little tour and it got back to me later on and when I heard it I just absolutely started bawling but I was told over the phone that when these little and they weren't all girls I shouldn't say girls there was a mix but they they walked in and I think like 80 percent of them were indigenous and they started squealing and <laughs> out of excitement. And they started pointing at the portraits and saying, that could be me. That looks like my auntie. Uh-huh. That could be my mom. And I just like a wave hit me because that is what this work became. And it was beyond, beyond my project. It wasn't a project for me. You know, it, it became a community led for community project. And that is like one of the, yeah, biggest testaments to this work and the the people included in it and and the audience that it's for, because it is for an indigenous audience. It is for our people to say, damn, I'm beautiful or look at my strength or Mm -hmm. I can feel her power. Like that's huge, so. Beautiful, beautiful, Catherine. I, I think we should go with some questions because I don't think we can top that yeah. statement. Beautiful. Mm. So I'll come back into the uh, the Zoom room. I'm back. I'm back. I have some questions for everyone. Um, so I'll also make sure that everyone can see me <laughs> it's so weird with the, the zoom so one of the questions how is tito my dog <laughs> <laughs> he's all right so, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> so 
we asked um, community members and some of our attendees for questions. They could submit some questions beforehand. And I picked out a few that I thought were quite interesting. Um, and this one, both feel free to answer, but here's the first question. Have you ever lost the love for art? And if you have, how did you ignite it again? Mm. Tania? Oh, you uh, on the spot with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh, lost the love for art. There, <sighs> I'm gonna say, like, uh, I've definitely like been uninspired. I found myself very affected by the world around me. And it's why I have like, I'll say such tight bubbles in my sphere of who I let in and what I let in. And I found like during early COVID, and I think all of us felt that, that there was just this shift in how we connected with each other, obviously. But on a deeper level um, that I like, I'll say I co-raised my daughter with my parents and that support was, taken away and it got me thinking about how kinship is an action-based activity an action-based mm -hmm. relationship and how the act of kinship had to take on such dig digital and isolated forms and it was like such a series of like deep thinking and loss and kind of grieving what my daughter will see as kin when she's older because of these shifts because the shift isn't over and that got me sad <laughs> and I found like my art slowed down and how I wrote about it slowed down and what I was reading slowed down but I just had to allow myself I'll say to grieve or to like mourn the loss mm -hmm. and acknowledge that it was a loss and you know, do what I'll say Indigenous people have done since time immemorial, adapt and move on. Like we said, we're, we survive. Mm -hmm. So that was for me, like the closest time that I could say that I've lost art. Mm -hmm. Catherine? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, I can definitely relate to um, just being more isolated in terms of COVID. And I think like I'm that type of person also, I'm not super social. There's like two sides of me where I can be, but for the most part, I'm not. And so that world has definitely shrunk even more. And so I find myself like just getting in, in my own head and that can affect how I, how I create or why I'm not creating. Um, but also it's tied to narrative that my work is is so closely tied to personal narrative so if i'm going through grief or or trauma or you know i i'll shift i'll pull away from that because it's so closely linked to why i do what i do and i take time to to feel that or to go through that and then I'll usually come back and create something because of that but there are definite like ebbs and flows in um, these more intense projects or like larger art focused projects um, and then there's also like my jewelry and adornment that has turned into a business yes but Aside from it being a business, there's still a lot of joy in making jewelry and adorning the body and having people feel um, power just by wearing a pair of beaded earrings or a necklace. And so I'll usually, if I'm going through, um, you know, like if I'm pulling away from my art practice because of something, I'll usually feed it back into another art form of some sort if that makes sense. So it's just kind of like balancing it all out. I can't, there are definite times where I like pull completely away. And that just means I need like a mental break. And that mm -hmm. um, I don't see this as work, but it is my income. So 
I usually need an outside voice. And that's usually my husband saying, uh, you've been working for three months straight. Like, let's go away for the weekend. And it's like, oh yeah, shit. Like maybe I do need some personal time here. But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it's definitely like a question I used to ask a lot of other artists too, like, how do you balance that? And there is no answer. I don't think we all, we all create differently and, and react differently to, to change and, and what's happening around us. So I don't, it's not going to directly translate. So I just stopped asking people for that answer. They usually don't. Have. <laughs> There's a question from the Linda in the Q&A box. Um, I mean, you touched upon the materials in your answers, but um, Belinda is asking, Catherine, can you talk a bit about the materials in the works? What was it like working with the plastic beads? Positive challenges? <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> don't bring me back there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, the work, so the, like I was saying, the garments themselves were, were perler beads and sometimes other plastic um, components. Um, and then some of the other, like the chokers or medallions, usually were a hybrid of the perler beads, plastic perler beads, and glass beads. Um, and perler beads were challenging. I was, I was working with them in a way that they're not meant to really be manipulated. And so finding ways for them to bend around like the body and still be wearable and like not fall apart. Um, they're meant to be like format or formulated on like a template that you iron. And so like a grid is only possible. So I had to find a way to not use the grid at all and like create my own template, which was like a cookie sheet with um, like sticky lint roller side facing up so that the beads would just like stick to the paper and then I could draw the pattern on the paper first and kind of follow it and then create these much larger pieces that I could then iron together so it was a lot of trial and error for the first month um, and then I kind of got the feel of it um, but in terms of like the material itself I chose it as you know logistically I had to make these massive pieces that I couldn't possibly bead um, using traditional glass beads. Um, so it was a way for me to like create larger work more, more quickly. Um, and then in terms of it being plastic, um, it's in relationship to adaptability um, of Indigenous people that we've continually used ingenuity to, to survive off the land. And, and to live with the land in that way. And so I was taking this idea of the mass consumption of plastic product waste and reformulating it to say, well, let's, let's you know, use the in ingenuity and adaptability that we've always relied on and let's formulate that plastic waste into wearable work. And so it kind of plays back into these themes of, um, of survival and like adapting as as indigenous people. Um, but to Neil and, and Catherine, thank you so much for, for being so open and, and sharing with us tonight. We really appreciate both of you being here. I felt like I was watching like two best friends chatting. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I love the energy. It was wonderful. Like thank you so much. Um, before we say goodbye and part ways for this evening, I'll just reshare my screen again, um, but make sure let's stay connected. Come and visit us at the Art Gallery of Windsor. We just gave you a little sneak peek and some images of Catherine's and Tamil's work and collaboration. Uh, so you'll have to come and visit us in person to see the rest. We're open now Tuesday to Saturday from 10 to five, and then on Sunday from 11 to five, so we have some new extended hours. So come and visit us. You can visit us online as well at agw.ca and follow us on social media at agw401. And make sure everyone to go follow Catherine and Tamil on social media as well to stay up to date on all of their amazing projects um, that are coming up. And we hope to see everyone very soon at the Art Gallery of Windsor. I'll stop sharing my screen and make sure I didn't 
miss anything in the chat, but just some messages of thanks uh, in the chat for both uh, you, Tanil, and Catherine. Uh, so thank you, everyone who attended. And we're going to say good night and um, until we see each other again. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Sophie. It was fun. Thanks, Tanil. Thank you. I'll think of awesome. the next project. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Too.